uh, who is going to be with us this early morning. Now, this conversation is going to answer a couple of questions you and I have had in the recent past. So kindly share this feed from the different walks of life, those on Facebook, and those on YouTube, you're so much welcome to this early morning. Good morning, Honorable Chagulanyi. Good morning, Andrew. It's a miracle. Honor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure having you. Good to have you again. Yeah. It has been, I think, like, um, we're getting close to a year since we last had a conversation. Yeah. It has been very interesting. First of all, you had the president's speech, and I saw a couple of people online who they could not wait to hear your your response to the president's speech. That was last week. Um, he, he said people like your party, the NUP, um, are trying to ignite the Kabaka Yeka, the Amin's approach of politics. What is your response to that? Well, I'll get to the uh, Kabaka Yeka allegations later. Mm. But like you said, many people couldn't wait. Yep. Um, on the contrary, I couldn't believe, mm. and I'm sure many other people couldn't believe that this is the same Museveni mm. that was speaking. I mean, uh, while we know that he's such a hypocrite, while we know that he's a person who lies with a straight face and wide open eyes, but again, this one was taken a notch higher. I mean, this is Museveni who just in the short... Uh, a period before was, uh, you know, applauding mm. uh, security uh, for beating me. He was applauding FD, uh, uh, SFC mm. for torturing me in Arua. He said they did it right. He <laughs> said they beat me very well. Mm. Now, this is the same person, mm. uh, again, speaking as if he's an opposition activist, condemning mm. the torture, the brutality that is meted by his own forces. I mean, they do it on behalf of him. They beat mm. and murder Ugandans on behalf of him. Mm. And certainly, on, uh, I mean, on his orders. What do you mean when you say that he sounds like an opposition activist in one way or the other? Because he comes to say exactly what we have been saying for the longest time. We've been condemning the torture, the brutal torture, the, the murder, uh, extrajudicial murder of citizens. Mm. I mean, Museben himself came out and applauded uh, security for murdering uh, citizens, mm. you know, for pacifying the country by murdering citizens. Mm -hmm. And now he is here condemning it at the same time. Of mm. course, besides uh, the hypocrisy that mm. he always represents, we are sure that he's saying this because the pressure is much. Museveni the is pressure saying, from who? The pressure from the citizens of Uganda and the pressure from the international community. Uh -huh. You saw just the other day his friend Omar el-Bashir is mm. going to be handed to the ICC. And you know we took Museveni to the mm. ICC. Mm. So he knows what befalls dictators like himself. Mm. He is seeing in the near future. So he's trying to run away from that reality mm. and leave these others that he orders to do uh, those atrocities. I mean, this is characteristic of Museveni. You saw how we used Kaihura mm. to brutalize Ugandans, but when Kaihura was sanctioned by the uh, ICC, mm. Museveni left him like but, that. But, but Honorable Chagulani, Museveni yeah. was on record uh, last week. He said that there is no party that has upheld the human rights in this country, like the NRM party. And um, he was a la carte on that. He said, well, there are a few things that could go under the carpet, but the human rights says that they have maintained it. What do you make of that? Well, I call it hypocrisy. And if hypocrisy was a person, <laughs> that would be Museveni. <laughs> I mean, this is a person who, under his command, his son mm. is, is overseeing the brutal uh, arrest, kidnaps mm. of people right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. citizens are being held against the law in military detentions. James Moviru, mm -hmm. an elected councillor, is in much in their military detention for dressing the way I'm dressed. Mm -hmm. Many young people, I mean, people have been castrated, mm -hmm. eyes plucked out. Mm -hmm. Women have been raped. You know this. Everybody knows this. Mm -hmm. And Museveni has always been applauding people that have been doing this simply because they were keeping him in power. Now he sees it's going down south 
and he is kicking everybody else under the bus. And very soon mm -hmm. he will be picking these people and handing them to the ICC. But it is him that we are going after because mm -hmm. he is the chief priest of that brutality. And he said that NUP and, um, and the likes behave like terrorists, want to bring Kabaka Yika and Amin. What is your response to this? Because you're saying he's a hypocrite, he doesn't respect the human rights and all. But he says your party is behaving like uh, terrorists, not online, not offline. You want to bring back the, the anarchy that came with uh, the Amin regime and the separation of the Kabaka Yika sect. Do we have the law in Uganda? Why doesn't the law work on us if we're behaving like terrorists? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the same person whose security minister called us terrorists for speaking the truth. How come they have not, the law has not worked on us? Mm -hmm. Museveni has always been trying to use tribal narratives whenever he has no argument, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Why, why, what do you mean? What do you mean, Kabaka Eka? Because I'm in Uganda, you want me to apologize because I'm in Uganda? I certainly will not apologize for that. Mm. But again, that has been Museveni over time. Every time he has no argument, he does exactly that, you know. Mm. Museveni is the only person that can be compared to I mean, In fact, even worse, he's mm. doing what the Amin regime did times 10 or times, you know, more than 10. Well, so then, um, he has no more authority to compare uh, us to Then, that. Honorable, one would say that maybe Museven has respect for the human rights, but maybe his other structures, the directives, are not adhered to by his people. What do you make of this? When he comes on the TV, on the media, national media, and says that, look, I've, 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 I've directed this and this, but it has not been done. This time I'm going to take charge. What do you make of that? Then let him be honest and say he is not in charge. He is either a hypocrite or he's not in charge, or both. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I mean, how do you say I've instructed uh, my forces to observe human rights, mm. and then human rights are being abused under the watch of your son? Mm. He came on national TV and said the SFC, which, is under, which was effectively mm. under the command of his son, yeah. is the one that has been carrying out these abductions. Mm. The abductions, we mean people citizens being abducted mm. tortured some have missed not being seen again chibalama john bosco we've never seen him again our brothers from kiseka we've not seen them again mm. those that have been lucky to resurface have shown up with missing eyes with missing teeth with the smashed uh, manhoods women raped and all that all this is being done under the watch of museveni and museveni's son and his close you know uh cocoon. What do we make of that? <laughs> it is sanctioned by him mm. or he's not in charge? Or in, both, like I in said. In November, at least 54 people, for the record, were shot dead while demonstrating your arrest in Mayugi district. In this admission and claim of indiscipline, part of the justice you've been calling for and for those who lost their, their lives, do you believe that um, the more we keep agitating and rather ad advocating for them to be released or to, to resurface, it will be justice enough? Of course, justice delayed is justice denied. Mm. I mean, many people, even before the election, mm -hmm. they've been abducted. And like I said, some have never shown up again. Some have shown up dead mm. and others have shown up severely tortured. Mm. We've been agitating for that. And just the other day, Museveni also comes out to agitate for the same. Mm. You are condemning the people that are under your supervision for criminality. Mm. Why have they not been arrested? Mm. Napoleon, uh, this uh, guy from military police, is on camera beating mm. journalists. Mm. How come none of them has been arrested? You know, you have seen even the BBC has documented the murder in cold blood of mm. citizens mm. you know on camera how come no single person has been apprehended for that it clearly shows mm -hmm. that museveni is just acting to the gallery mm. like i said he's under pressure from the international community mm. he wants to put up an act which certainly doesn't mean it never says what he means and, and then that brings me to my other question uh, honorable chaglani you took president museveni to the icc why do you think the ICC would be a good place to resolve Ugandan matters? Doesn't that serve the narrative? Everyone, you know, a couple of people have heard that uh, you are pushing a foreign agenda. If, if, if you're taking him to the ICC, 
have we exhausted the options around the region have we exhausted the options around the, our, our, our own country First of all, Andrew, I want to remind you that we are part of the International Community. Yes, we signed the wrong We are part of the uh, mm. UN. Mm. And secondly, uh, I will quote Museven himself. He took Joseph Kennedy to the ICC. Mm. Was he serving a foreign agenda? Mm -hmm. But was. most importantly, I'll tell you that the justice system here has more or less been untwisted. Okay. You have seen all the... Uh, you know matters that have go have gone to court mm. matters of uh, human rights since i was tortured in arua mm. nothing has been done we have not gotten justice and all other ugandans here mm. you know even right now as we speak a matter was taken to court challenging the trial of civilians uh, in a military court which is illegal Mm -hmm. That matter took years, the Kabazuguruka case, to be resolved. And even when it was resolved, you see that they are playing a delaying tactic while innocent young men and women are rotting in military detentions. Like I said, mm -hmm. an example is Wizi and James Mobiru, a, a counselor mm -hmm. who was elected, is being kept in Machindie torture chambers. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they want to intimidate people. So there's no rule of law here. And when it does not work here, we take it internationally. So and you, most importantly, mm, I want you to know mm, that Museveni feeds mm, off the uh, international community. How? By borrowing money which you and your children and your children's children are going to pay. The same money that is being used to keep us as slaves. And that is why we try to control him also from there. Mm, because that is where he gets the support. So when you go international, you're blocking his feeds of exactly. funds. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love that. Yeah. Yesterday, um, rather, when he was addressing the nation, there was something he actually highlighted to. He said Kaira was ideologically bankrupt. Do you believe with that statement? Shame. <laughs> Shame. As a, as a person who shares a relation with uh, the late Andrew uh, uh, mm. Rutakome Kaira, mm. I feel offended. But again, as freedom fighters, all freedom fighters, you know, mm. I'm sure they are equally offended to see that Museveni disrespects Dr. Andrew Takome Kaira, a doctor of criminology, mm. for being ideologically bankrupt. Mm. It's only that Museveni has been a con man all his life. Come he conned on. people, and even people who fought with him. I will remind you that Museveni hid one time in my grandfather's house. In your grandfather's Yes, uh, the late Joseph Walakira. He knows it. Mm. He knows what I'm talking about. So, Museveni has been this kind of person that comes out to brag, that comes out to speak because he cannot be answered. But history is known. Mm. Okay? Mm. Museveni did not capture the greater Buganda. The whole of uh, Chagwe was captured by Kaira and mm. the Fedem, Uganda Freedom Movement mm. and all these other, uh, you know, freedom fighters that joined him and supported him and worked with him. What happened to Kaira? He was arrested because Museveni feared competition and taken uh, and charged with treason. But later, released in 1987 because there was no uh, crime against him. Mm. This same hypocritical Museveni that says he does not murder um, political opponents cannot tell the people who killed Kaira. Mm. Okay, Kaira was arrested by Museveni, taken to Ruzira, but because they could not contain him and they could not challenge him legally, mm. he was killed in cold blood. He mm. was murdered in the same year in March in the Rumoli. Yeah, so sorry. Museveni cannot explain this. He should be ashamed of himself. He should know that all history is quoted. He is not the master of history. He has written books and his own books contradict him. Go read his mustard seed. I have. Go read uh, What's Africa's Problem. Go read Pecos Kutesa's book. Mm. Go read, I mean, all the documentation will put him to shame. Mm. So he should be ashamed to, to disrespect the memory of Andrew Lutakome Kaira because that memory is still fresh in many people of Uganda. Well, now, during the political season, um, we have just had that conversation just to tap a little bit of what the Honorable has been paying attention to. Those who are joining us live, uh, we're live on the different platforms, and I want to thank you. Um, let's keep the tweets a little bit. You know, Sivo and Sen, I understand it's a, it's a critical morning, but let, let's take calm. Honorable, during the political season, your name came up on a daily. This is the first interview we are actually doing uh, since um, 
This is the first interview you're doing uh, since um, the political election ended. What have you been up to? Quite a lot. Like? But I'll say generally, I've been about removing the dictatorship of Museveni. That's what I'm preoccupied with, and that is what every Ugandan should be preoccupied with, reading our nation of the Museveni pandemic. Mm. So that's, that's what you've been running up to. I, I, I am a little bit touched when you, when you talked about Kaira. I, yeah. I could see the energy. You feel yeah. that people who have shedded their blood for this motherland have not been rewarded with the justice and fairness of this country. Yeah. So given that you say that the president of this country and the powers that be, they have not paid what should be given to the Ugandans who sacrifice for the country, then what could be the solution here? How best do we move from here as a country? The solution is being honest. Being honest, being true to your word. That is what we are taught as African men. Be true to your word. As simple as that. Mm. Museveni should remember that Chukunyu meeting that they had with Kaira. Mm. What did they discuss? He should remember, I mean, uh, Mzei Naduli has always reminded him, mm. you know, when Museveni reached out to Kabaka Motebi in that meet to call him to, uh, uh, you know, convince him to have people support him, what was the understanding? The understanding, among others, was human rights, was decency, was democracy. Mm -hmm. That is what we struggled for. But again, like I said, Museveni is one person that will say a word and shamelessly mm -hmm. go against it. This is the same person mm -hmm. that wrote in his first book that Africa's problem are the leaders that overstay in power. Mm. He has been in power for 36 years and does not want anybody to remind him of what he said. This is the same person mm. that said he would never be president beyond the age of 75. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then then the, so, it brings me to the question, Honorable. Is it the Ugandans, we the people, are we gullible enough that we don't see this? What have we missed as a country? Because, like you said, he's a very cunning man. Haven't we woken up our eyes and sight to see the cunningness that comes with it? Well, I'll borrow the words of Dr. BCJ uh, mm. when he was on TV recently, mm. and I want to agree with him. He said that uh, when somebody oppresses you mm. over time, one year, two years, five years, ten years, twenty years, 30 years, 35 years, 36 and counting. Uh -huh. Then, while you look at the, uh, your oppressor, you should also look in yourself As and know that sometimes it <clears throat> might be your stupidity. Mm. And somebody quoted, and I also agree, that mm. when God is punishing at the end of the day, he will punish those that oppressed people. Mm. But he will also punish those oppressed people even much more for <laughs> allowing this person <laughs> God is to going oppress to punish them. us. Okay? Mm. So we probably also have a problem. Mm. How come I'm the only one who is talking about this? I'm sure the journalists have been affected. Yep. The business people have been affected. The artists have been affected. The doctors have been affected. The lawyers, everybody has been affected by the Museveni misrule. Mm. How come only a handful of people talk about this? This should be the business of every Ugandan if this nation matters to you. Mm. Just this morning, and by the way, I want to also grab this opportunity mm. to congratulate my good friend, Dr. Ichilema. Uh, HH in ah, have you seen the fire in that country? Well, well Zambia has done it. They've shown us, but I... which this is something we should have done long time ago. Mm -hmm. Lungu tried to arm twist uh, the voice of the Zambian people, the cameras but were he watching. couldn't. The cameras were watching. Mm. Cameras were watching all the time. Did you even sleep? You're following this. <laughs> of course I'm following this uh, so much, and I'm sure everybody else is following. Uh, so, like I was saying, Andrew, mm. that we probably also have a problem, mm. you know. Mm. Today, this, our struggle has been mainly a common man's struggle. The, low, the, the barbers, mm. the border border riders, mm. the, the DJs, the musicians. But everybody should be equally involved mm. in this. It's unfortunate that Museveni is using the oppressed people of Uganda to oppress them even further. And mm. we must turn this around if we must now, free ourselves. Now, Honorable, um, you, you really had a very great quote. I really want to thank you. The feedback online here, the questions keep coming through, but I'll stick to <laughs> what we actually have here. You proved your quote in the, in the recent elections around the Buganda, should I, the central region, um, with a resounding win. How do you intend to sell the brand and the ideology of NUP beyond the central? Because central and some parts of East went red. 
I'll tell you this, my brother, mm. that is a wrong narrative. That's a very misleading narrative, mm. trying to paint a picture that uh, change is only desired in the in central. central yes. That is wrong. Okay. You saw what happened in Arua when we were there. Yeah. You saw what happened in all of northern Uganda. You saw what happened in western Uganda in Chiruhura. <laughs> the military had to beat people mm. so that they don't, in quote-unquote, mm. ashamed. General Museveni for showing support for change. From where it okay? comes from. So this is everywhere, not only here mm. in the central. Everywhere well, in Uganda. And I'll tell you uh -huh. that just like we told you that largely Western Uganda did not vote mm. because they did not allow them. The whole of Northern Uganda, they did not allow people to go to the polls. Okay? Mm. Internet was switched off. Electricity was switched off in order to push this narrative. Museven is pushing, pushing the central mm. narrative so that he can put that tag, that tribal tag. So it is us. Museveni's call is saying that you're building a Buganda party. That is nonsense. That is nonsense. They're trying to make me feel sorry about who I am. And I will never feel sorry <laughs> for who I am. I, love I am proud and every <laughs> Ugandan should be proud yes. of who they are. Mm. Okay? And he should also be ashamed because Museveni has been largely supported by mm. people in the central. Mm. Why wasn't it a central affair mm. when he was getting all these, uh, these votes here? You okay, know? Honorable. NUP, um, going back to the party beat, do you at any one time regret having stood for presidency? Or, after standing for the presidency, what big lessons did you learn? I, I, I followed some of the trail. There were some trails I didn't follow, but... I saw some recordings that never made it to the media eye. <laughs> yeah. um, they're gross. I condemn them in the strongest terms possible. But do you regret going on that journey? Of course I don't regret. And if I had to do it all over again, mm. I'll do exactly that, even more radically and more aggressively. Okay. Because I believe that what we were doing and what we continue to do is mm. the right thing to do. So I don't generation. have any regrets. There was a lot of criticism when your family actually was evacuated, I think, shortly after, after the election. I think we, we, we were heading there. Um, a lot of criticism came up through uh, just before the election in anticipation. Some supporters felt betrayed. What was the logic behind this? Somebody feels betrayed when I, when, when you take, took when I take my family out of danger. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I, I would do that any time. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, you know, evacuate my family any time they are in danger. And that's what anybody should do when they can afford it. Mm. Yeah. NUP is the strongest political party in the 11th parliament, but also it is the youngest political party in parliament. How ready is the party handling the opposition allies? How are you holding the allies there? Um, for starters, we are not only intending to play opposition politics uh -huh. because we are not the opposition we are the option <laughs> okay so <laughs> bring it again bring it. I, I like that i like that you are yeah. not the what no we are not the opposition we are the option nice. we are only i'm um, twisted into that position and like we said we shall use every platform mm. to push for the agenda of change mm. of course we are in touch with all um, like-minded people and I must tell you that even within the regime they are those uh, people that are not as outspoken as we are that agitate for change mm. silently that are supporting us that wow. are with us and we continue to you know to build synergies mm. but even within the uh, forces the open forces of change which you like to call mm. the opposition mm. we are pushing for you know uh cohesion mm. because we we've said this right from the beginning that nobody can do this alone to uproot a dictatorship we must work together and let us look at the examples malawi served as an example unfortunately mm. we didn't hit to it now we have an example of mm. zambia mm. that just uprooted uh a propping dictator lungu had uh, started picking terrible lessons from seven and i'm very glad that the people of zambia uh, prevailed and I'm sure the people of Uganda and all people of Africa will uh, take heed of that example. Okay. Your opponent insists that your party is already doing deals in government but is this a way to grow strength as a party? What do you mean? Can you ask the, that again? The, 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 there is word in the corridors of power mm -hmm. that some people within mm -hmm. the NUP mm -hmm. are sealing deals with the party, with the, with the, with the government. What do you make of this? Well, I would say 
that uh, just like every other dictatorship, they mm. will try as much as possible. Mm. If they cannot coerce, then they will convince. Mm. And if they cannot convince, then they will do otherwise. They use carrot and stick. Oh, yeah. And those weak-minded people will certainly betray the struggle, you know. Mm. And uh, like we've always been saying, we are going to see everybody mm. by their deeds. Of course, just like uh, some people in the regime mm. are reaching out to us, uh, silently and telling us friends we are with you although we cannot speak out mm. because of fear of this and that mm. there's a possibility that the regime is reaching out to some of our rank and file okay. but like I've just said we'll see them by their deeds and in any case that these people are not accountable to me as an individual they are accountable to the people of Uganda who elected them and they elected them to those offices with with certain expectations mm -hmm. so the people of Uganda like I've always been reminding those politicians mm. are their bosses to, the, to whom they are accountable okay now NUP um, is not yet a member to the iPod yeah. And um, I really want to tap your thoughts about this matter. Are you um, as saying that just rejecting the opportunities iPod presents or you come off with a narrative like we know what you're doing and we're watching you from that far or we have learned how unfair the platform is and we won't come into it? Well, we have our own reservations mm -hmm. about iPod and I'll tell you that uh, from what we read of iPod now, it's more or less uh, a legitimizing tool of the regime. We believe in dialogue, mm -hmm. but like Mandela told us, it's free people, the dialogue, not uh, putting your boot on my neck and you say, let's talk. Mm. So there's no sense really <coughs> us being in uh, an institution uh, aimed at dialogue when the regime is doing what it's doing, when we cannot be allowed to uh, have our political activities, legal political activities, mm. where we cannot be allowed to build our legal structures, where our leaders are under illegal incarceration, mm. where our paraphernalia mm. is illegally criminalized, and so on and so forth. Mm. So when that is still the case, then you don't expect us to be part of that iPod because it doesn't make sense to us wow, in any way. Wow, wow. Yeah. That makes a lot of, you've, you've changed the entire perspective I was looking at it. It is a yardstick to justify the current government. Certainly. Okay, now in relation to international relations, let's just get a little bit across the border. You've had the parademonium between Uganda and Kenya sparked by William Ruto the other day. Yeah. He was denied to come here, um, which is the first in the region we've had since 2019. So international relations with our regional neighbor has been sinking deeper and deeper. Rwanda, March 2019, Kenya 2020, over substandard exports. How can we deal with this to, to, to mend the fences? Because you can't hate the neighbor in the south, Rwanda, and again you have a problem with, with with Kenya again how best can we go about this honorable well I'll tell you that Museveni and his modus operandi mm. is a disaster mm -hmm. not only to Uganda but even to our neighbors I mean many of uh, Ugandans especially the males mm. had a good relationship with, with Rwanda. Rwanda. <laughs> See what Museveni did. <laughs> but coming to Kenya, yeah. um, of course, the people of Kenya are the ones that have the right mm. to determine who leads them. Mm. And I encourage them to use that right, to use that mandate, to decide who governs them. Mm. You know, as brothers, uh, you know that the people of Uganda and people of Kenya have always looked out for each other. Yeah. When we were suffering with uh, the dictatorship of Idi Amin, many uh, refugees were housed in Kenya, mm. and we don't take that for granted. Mm. Even during the, 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 the Obote times, many Ugandans fled to Kenya. And in 2007, mm. when there was post-election uh, uh, violence, yeah. Uganda returned the favor. Mm. I mean, when I was incarcerated in Kenya, Mm. I mean, in, 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 I saw in, Tom in Nairobi in, in, drumming in Gulu, the mm. and, uh, and Arua. Mm. You saw the people of Kenya standing up for us. So the people of Uganda and the people of Kenya are joined in a, um, uh, in a moral 
you know, fabric that cannot be broken. Mm. However, like I said, it's the people of Kenya to decide mm. who rules over them. I can only say mm. that uh, the people of Kenya have seen what kind of disaster Museveni and Musevenism has been. So there's... N uh, I, I would really, really, really well, encourage... Well, 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 pull the tune. Museven and Museven is a Exactly. Honorable. Museven is, 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 is a character. Musevenism yeah. then becomes a routine or a trait. Yeah. You're throwing it to Kenya. Yes. I'm, no, I'm telling uh, the people of Kenya mm. and the leaders of Kenya mm. that there's no good example to pick from Museven, you know. You want a leader that is going to, I mean, uh, what kind of lesson is, uh, moral lesson is Museveni going to give to leaders of Kenya? Mm. Um, what are we exporting? Exporting the injustice? Exporting murder? Exporting torture? Exporting democracy? Exporting dictatorship? What do we want to export to Kenya? So I would uh, encourage the people of, Uga of Kenya to avoid Museveni, to stay as far as possible from Museveni and Musevenism. Mm. Um, let's, um, when you talk about justice, I'm looking about the people who lost their lives during elections. Some of them, um, there was one I saw you around the roundabout of Musega when you're coming back from Masaka, yeah. I think. Um, the ones who lost their lives during the election, yeah. how best could they be compensated or their families? Well, we, first of all, we are not after compensation. Mm -hmm. We don't want people to be killed. We don't want you to kill our children and then you pay us. Like Museveni was saying, mm. they murder people, uh, want only on the streets, and he says we are going to pay them. How much money are you going to pay the family of Frank for killing their son? Mm. How much money are you going to pay the children for taking away their father, their breadwinner? How much money are you going to pay for the parents for killing their children? So we just don't want our children to be killed. Like I said, around Wusega, that was Frank mm. Senteza who was murdered by military police under the command of one Napoleon. And all this was on camera. Mm. Museven is pretending not to know that. What a kind, why, what a hypocrite. Let's, 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 let's go still back in, in the diaspora. Many Ugandans have suffered, um, and we don't have, should I call it, strong functional embassies in, in the diaspora. In, 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 we only have a pact with Jordan as a country but then we have Kuwait we have Abu Dhabi and all those you've had these people in the Biyumbas suffering how best can a nation navigate this I've seen it with my eyes I've seen Ugandans being traded being sold like the 18th and 19th Slavery. century slave trade I've <coughs> seen that mm. it happens mm -hmm. as we speak Every day at Entebbe Airport, mm. girls as young as 13 are being put on the plane mm. to go and, uh, and, 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 and serve as maids. But you know, lots of abuse, lots of uh, torture and dehumanization have been ongoing. Our embassies have been reduced to playing politics and to spy on Ugandans <coughs> that are expressing themselves, especially on social media. That what, explains what, what, why... When, when you come to Ugandans yes, expressing yes. themselves on social media and being spied on, now that brings me to the issue of Lumbuye. Yes. Um, who should I say is a fanatic of, 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 of you? Not uh, a fanatic mm, of me. Mm. He speaks the truth. Although, of course, I'll tell you yeah. that uh, sometimes mm. some Ugandans um, express themselves mm. in a way that I may uh, slightly disagree with, mm. but like one writer said, I disapprove of what you speak, but I will defend with my life mm. your right to say it. When mm. Stella Nyanz was expressing herself, mm. although sometimes we didn't uh, agree with the language that she was using, she had all her right and we stood with her and mm. supported her. When Frank Gashumba was expressing himself, sometimes I disagreed with his direct attack yes. on uh, the Boganda institution, yeah. but he had the right to express himself. Mm. Similarly, Fred Kajubi Rumbi mm. has a right to express himself mm. and he has a right to safety. S many Ugandans mm. feel safe criticizing the Museveni dictatorship mm. from a safe distance because they know what happens to people that speak the truth here. Honorable many of them are killed. Honorable Chaglan, this yes. is the guy who is advocating for a genocide against his fellow Ugandans, announcing our king dead, insulting the Buganda institution like you're saying. Yes, we have a right and freedom of expression, but to what limits do we have to go? Well, as an individual, I've not seen, and I'll be very glad when, if you 
uh, provide evidence to the fact that he announced our king dead mm. or to uh, 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 fact that uh, he uh, announced uh, that, that he called for violence, mm. for, for, for genocide. I have personally not seen that evidence. I'll be glad if you showed that to me. Mm. But I have seen some people that have been uh, with members of parliament and have been openly advocating for the continued murder of Ugandans. You remember on the 18th and 19th mm. of uh, November last year, one blogger came out openly mm. bragging, we are the national resistance movement and we shall kill all of you. And even called for the murder of my own children. I've not seen, and the person lives in Uganda, I've not seen them being apprehended. Mm. So these are the double standards and hypocrisy that mm. we talk about. But anyway, like I was saying, everybody has a right to express mm. themselves. And if anyone has a problem with them, we have uh, national law and we have international law. And no crimes, especially internationally, can go unchallenged. Of course, two wrongs don't make it right. And uh, those ones just joining this conversation, we are live from Magere here in Chadondo. And we are with Honorable Robert Chagulanyi, the NUP National Unity Platform Party President. And we're looking at a couple of things. Honorable, what's yes. your thought about how COVID-19 was handled? The first wave, the second wave, the execution, the implementation, the funds. The when funds. The funds, mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the COVID pandemic mm. was in the first place politicized okay. uh, to the benefit of the regime mm. and utterly mismanaged. Um, you remember mm. that fighting the COVID-19 pandemic is fighting a disease. Mm. It's only in Uganda that we are fighting a disease by, you know, empowering the military and the police. We fight the disease with guns. Mm. When I was still in parliament, billions mm. of money, dollars, were borrowed. And like I've always been saying, you, your children, and your children's children mm. are going to pay that money. The mismanagement, you've seen it according to the parliamentary reports mm. and the auditor general's reports, mm. although the culprits are only elevated you know, they are not punished. Mm. But the corruption messed it up completely. Uh, it was politicized mm. to help Museveni keep in power, to hound the, the, the opposition, uh, blocking communication, blocking uh, campaigns, while everywhere else, uh, everything else uh, goes on, like in Chibukubo mm. today as we speak, or even in the recent past, in the first lockdown, Nothing was, uh, wa, 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 was being observed like an SOP. It was largely politicized. Mm. You saw the passing, the constant passing of uh, soldiers and police officers, not doctors and medics. Mm. While the um, medical schools were closed, the military and police schools were open. Mm. That is how the Museveni regime handled the, handled the pandemic. And that explains why it went out of hand and continues to go out of hand. Some NRM bloggers <coughs> online, they say that uh, your campaigns were the super spreader of the pandemic. That as soon as we were done with, um, with the campaigns and all, numbers started to surge. Well, allow me to remind you mm. that the first rally... Mm. And the first procession mm. were done by the Minister of Health herself, Jen Luther Cheng. You know? <laughs> now, what kind of hypocrisy is Super that? Spreader. You know? Mm. While churches were closed <coughs> to worshippers, mm. they were actually open to NRM campaigns. Mm. What do you make of that? Allow me to remind you that the NRM carried out its primaries by lining up on the back amidst the pandemic the height of the pandemic <coughs> what do you make of that so mm. these people they even forget what they said yesterday or what they did yesterday mm. it's just a bunch of irresponsible people let's talk about the places of worship um there is some gentleman who sued government for keeping the mosques churches whatever places of worship being closed during the pandemic where we are today um, as a leader who, I like the word you said, we are the option. Yeah. How best can we navigate this as a country? Should we open these places of worship? I'll tell you that uh, 
it all begins with honesty and responsibility. We should first of all agree mm. that the COVID-19 pandemic is here with us mm. and it probably is not going to go away tomorrow. Mm. How do we go about this in a moral way, in a decent way, but in a practical and realistic way? If we are to maintain this hypocrisy of the Museveni regime, mm. then we are going to go around in circles. We are going to lie to each other. We are going to block our, our places of worship while uh, people are converging in other places. I'll tell you that the lockdown is largely where the media sees. Mm. Go outside Kampala. You know, it's, as, it's business as usual. True. So what are we doing really? And that brings me to schools. Should we use the same approach when it gets to schools? Well, certainly. Certainly. I <clears> mean, <throat> other countries have opened up schools. Mm. Schools have been closed more or less for two years two now. Years, yeah. For how long is this going to go on? Look, at I was uh, talking to my wife the other day because mm. she runs an NGO that largely focuses on uplifting the girl child, the, girl child the caring arts Uganda, and <coughs> we were in uh, uh, Ruero the other day with Ruero Triangle MPs. Mm. We were looking at the statistics by UNICEF, 22.5% rise in child pregnancy. Oh. And uh, it's largely, uh, you know, linked mm. to the lockdown. Mm. Now... What kind of mothers are we going to have? What kind of generation are we building? So it is important that we put the funds and the facilities and the logistics that we have to what functions. Mm. If we don't, if we have a, 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 a government that does not only focus on keeping itself in power mm. and silencing critical voices, but serving the people, then we would have certainly come up with a solution to ensure that we keep our children uh, in school, mm -hmm. but observing necessary SOPs that are not only to silence people, but to benefit the Wanainchi. That makes a lot of sense. When you talk about that brings me, just last month, the Prime Minister, um, Honorable Nabanja, was very furious. I'm sure you must have seen this on media. Yeah. It was she was very furious about the relief that was sent to Kasese. Yeah. She was like, this is substandard. This is below the belt. And she has, <laughs> you know, flipped tables in there. And uh, <laughs> this fishmonger, like some people want to call her, seems to be like she's shocked at what she's seeing. What do you make of all this? Uh, for Nambanja to say she's shocked is hypocrisy. Again? She was in parliament with us <laughs> when we were looking at the beans that they were serving people really? in, the, in, the, in the previous, in the, in the first lockdown. Mm. You know, she must have seen the, 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 because she was not prime minister then, mm. but she certainly saw the food, the substandard food that mm. was being served to our people. And mm. that has been the case. You've mm. seen the, uh, the, not only the amount or, or the, the number of masks, but also the quality. Mm. If you have a poor quality government, it is only going to give poor quality services. <laughs> you understand? So Nabanja should not pretend to, 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 to be shocked. It shouldn't shock her. That is their modus operandi. That is what they do. That is NRM and Museveni. That is how rotten they are. Mm. And they should come to terms with that reality. And then that brings me to the question, what do you have to say about the fishmonger cabinet? What do you want me to say about it? Because he said he's using people you're not used to. He's using people with a rare gene of dynamic at play that you don't usually see these faces, uh, led by Nabaj, of course. Well, we see these faces, I'll tell you. Mm. And I'll tell you that this is an illegitimate government. Okay? I'll tell you that Museveni is an illegitimate president. The guy you are talking to right now mm. is supposed to be the president of Uganda because mm. he is the people, he is the one the people elected. Mm. But because Museveni, by the barrel of the gun, forced himself to the people, he's trying to change the narrative to divert every here and there. Mm. And that's why he keeps, you know, uh, making all stunts. But I'll also remind you mm. that even the people in office, <coughs> these are only office bearers. They don't have the power. Mm -hmm. How else would uh, the prime minister of a country come and claim that she is being <laughs> intimidated? You know, mafias. Yeah, mafias. Mm. You know, everybody has been talking about mafias. Who are the mafias? Mm. I mean, ask the chief mafia himself. <laughs> 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 yeah. Honorable, let's, let's look at um, the way forward as a country. NUP 2022. 
we just have a few more years to the next election the the, the, the government i'm sure it's already having its strategy uh, what is there for the nup what are the plans like if someone is out and supports the nup and they want to know how best can they plug in what's their call to action uh, for starters mm. it's important for our people all our people to know that we are being held at one point mm -hmm. it's very very important for us to know that mm. uh, you saw that people went to the polls mm. but their voice was suffocated that is the status quo that is where we are and it, we, we shouldn't wait for 2026 2024 not even 2022 mm. do what you can whenever you can do it Wow. Yeah. That is how, I mean, <coughs> that's how dictators are overpowered. You saw Bashir, mm. it was just about a year or thereabout after he announced himself having won with uh, over 80% mm. of, of, of the vote. But he was removed by the people. That is how uh, the Mugabe's, the Gaddafi's, the Blaise Kampuari's of mm. this world have been removed. And that is the same way that Museveni is. Museveni mm. is not a democratic leader. Mm. So don't even deceive yourself that, okay, this is politics as usual. We are, have come out of an election and we are going into another election. No, that is not the case. Okay. Our strategy mm. has always been uh, taking on the Museveni regime, both locally and internationally. And like I've briefed you internationally, we are trying as much as possible to make it clear to the international community, mm. which is responsible for keeping Museveni in power. You see, Museveni... So do you mean when, when we vote, it doesn't count? Someone sits out there in the void and decide for Ugandans in the international forums? No, no, no. I am telling you mm. that our vote doesn't count because the rebels that took over our country by force mm. in 1986 are still behaving in the same way. They are still the same people that deceive us, put on a democratic face, but when it suits them, pull out the gun and muzzle the voices of the Ugandans. Mm. However, the international community is equally responsible because the United States of America gives almost a billion shillings mm. every year to the Museveni regime, to the Museveni military, which Museveni military is responsible for killing Ugandans, for murdering, raping people, and keeping the democratic voices suppressed. The same to the, uh, the European Union, the same to all these other donors. Mm. So it, was it is our responsibility to go unto them. You saw Ugandans recently uh, demonstrating against the IMF mm. uh, money that they were giving to Uganda. Mm. Why do you support an illegitimate regime? Why do you keep spoon, uh, uh, giving money to this regime, which money is being used against the people. But you see, Honorable, you're saying it's an illegitimate government. Yeah. You went to courts of law and um, you lost trust in the courts of law uh -huh. and the courts of law announced. Just a, a minute. When you say you don't trust the courts of law, mm. what do, does that make them legitimate or illegitimate? Well, um, it depends on the context. <coughs> yeah, but whatever context it depends on. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, when you go to the Supreme Court mm. and the Chief Justice is clearly biased and is clearly behaving in, uh, uh, um, in an illegal manner. Mm -hmm. And you saw that Justice Chisache also came out. Mm. These were not my words. These words were also echoed by another judge National of television. the same <coughs> Supreme Court. Mm. You saw all that mess. You know, mm. let us pretend not to have seen that. So mm. having seen all that, am I still wrong to say the process is illegitimate? Mm. Because, I mean, uh, the, the, the law was abused mm. by the officers of the law themselves. Mm. Wow. And that's why I continue to say the Museveni <coughs> regime is illegitimate. I'm talking the legitimate leader. You're to, definitely, man. <laughs> <laughs> Great conversation. Um, we have been in the lockdown for 42 days. Um, at least I was lucky. Uh, my job allows me to, you know, flay and come out and talk to a couple of people. Ugandans have been in the lockdown. The economy is bad. Yeah. The economy is bad. Um, as a leader, how best can we revamp our economy to bounce back? For starters, I want to sympathize. Mm with our people that have been deliberately <coughs> impoverished 
and most importantly the common people, I mean border borders, ETC. You see this is a kind of regime that believes that you cannot rule over prosperous people. You can only rule over poor people. It explains why it's the lockdown that is being used to uh, chase people off their land. It's a lockdown that is being used to coerce taxi operators out of town and even to lock border borders out of town. Mm. So we are standing with them. And even when the regime pretends to reach out to them, certainly the corruption doesn't allow it. Mm. For starters, you cannot claim that you're reaching out to half a million people out of 44 million people. Mm. And also, even those half a million that they claim to reach out to, and they are not reaching out to them. Some have not received. Do you know? <coughs> you know how the Museven regime operates. Mm. Corruption is their, is their middle name. For starters, everything begins with governance. When there's no governance, I can guarantee you that the economy will continue sinking down. Let's take examples of uh, Zimbabwe. Mm. When there's misgovernance, when there's corruption, uh, the government is not going to function mm -hmm. to the benefit of the people. So, What's the way forward um, with, with all these, the chaos in the education Governance. sector, in the government, in the economy? How best can we look forward to a new hope as, as Ugandans? Well, some writers said it all rises and falls mm. with leadership, mm. you know. So for as long as the main agenda of those that rule over us is to stay in power, everything is going to be secondary you know wow. we are going to be amidst a pandemic but <clears throat> all the budget is not going to go to the health sector mm. it is going to go to security mm. we are going to have an education crisis but the budget and minds of those that do, that rule over us are not going to go to finding solutions on how best we can fix our education mm. and how best we can save our children no it is going to go on how best to you know to, to on how best to keep themselves in power and that is why the focus has always been um, I mean empowering security you'll find LDUs you'll find uh, police officers and, and military focusing not at uh, not at uh, you know ensuring people have face masks or ensuring this vaccination <coughs> but ensuring that people are kept in their homes it all begins and ends with the leadership we need for starters, to get rid of rulers, mm. and I'm deliberate about calling them rulers and mm. not the leaders. choice of what? Yeah, <laughs> we rulers must be able to get uh, rid of rulers and get leaders and get people whose sole aim is to find solutions for the population and not to themselves. Before we do that, mm. we are going to be going in circles. Museveni and his regime do not care whether you live or die. No, they don't. All they care about is staying in power and continuing to uh, loot our country and impoverish the people of Uganda. Well, this brings me to the very last one. We, we always say for the best for the last year. <clears throat> what do you make of... Uh Kabaka's speech, I have never heard him sound that way. And I saw you picked a couple of, you know, um, the takeaways from his speech. What do you make of his speech? Well, I'll say Sabasaja Kabaka was spot on. Mm. He spoke his mind, and I believe the mind of many Ugandans, not only the Baganda, mm. but Ugandans. I'll tell you that Buganda is not just a tribe. Yeah. It's a nation. Not pe all people that live in Buganda are Baganda, mm. you know. Yeah. It's a collection of people. And I must salute the Baganda for being the least tribal people. Because it is here in Buganda where you're going to find welcoming for mm. everybody. Although <coughs> this hypocrite keeps wanting to drive the tribal narrative, but he can't succeed because the reality says something different. Mm. Anyway, going back to the Kabaka's uh, speech, I mean, he was clear. He said to... Re to, to, to bring back, uh, to restore mm. the kingdom of Buganda, mm. we had to get actively and practi practically involved in mm. the removal, in removing the dictator. Those were his words. And I remind you that those words are as alive now as they were some 36 years ago in 1986. To remove the dictator 
everybody will have to get practically involved because everybody is equally affected. You're not going to sit there yeah. and think it's a business of only the border border riders, mm. a business of only the poor, a business of only the uneducated. No, this is a business for everybody. Mm. The pest that has eaten the fabric of our country is called Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. That is the biggest disaster that has befallen us. And until we get rid of the Museveni pandemic, mm. we are still going to be moving in circles. So he was spot on mm. um, and he indeed reminded us that what they agreed about before he was convinced to support the Museveni rebels mm. was the issue of human rights, was the issue of democracy. Mm. Unfortunately, all these have been thrown out of the window by the Museveni regime. Well, Honorable as a final, I, I, I really want to thank you for taking time off your busy schedule because thank you're actually you. planning quite a lot of things. But um, I'm extremely very grateful that you've taken time to give us an ear and uh, share with us your opinions. As we're finalizing, what are your last words to Ugandans? That's your camera, take it away. Well, to the people of Uganda, I'll tell you that it's not over until it's over. We all must get involved in the effort to remove the dictatorship of Museveni. It does not matter whether you are NUP, it does not matter whether you are DP, whether you are FDC, whether you are UPC, or whether you are NRM. Misgovernance affects us equally, and this pandemic should have shown all of us that we are all vulnerable. When money is borrowed and instead of fighting a disease is diverted to... to to other corrupt uh, ventures. We all suffer the same. We've seen our people die. We will continue to see our people die and we'll cry, cry, cry until we make an effort to try and get rid of the Museveni dictatorship. The fight is not over. We are continuing and everybody must get involved. Do everything you do. Do all you can and do it with all your might to ensure that we overcome this. Because, man, if we don't, then we are sentencing our children and our children's children to this effort again. I congratulate the people of Zambia. They just got and read of an, auto an autocratic leader. We too can do the same. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity Please. to wish our brother who is on camera a happy birthday, yeah. Elvis Kolovazi. <laughs> it's his birthday today. Did you know that? Oh, there so, you go. Happy birthday, my brother. Yeah. Uh, to our brothers uh, who are in jail, those that are incarcerated, I know that some of you may not be, be able to see us, but we continue to fight. You see now the dictator is shaking. He comes out to deny the things that he's doing. Why? Because that is pressure from the citizens. That is pressure from the international community. He knows that what he's doing is wrong. He sees that uh, Bashir is being taken to the ICC. And Museveni knows that he is next online. So he's trying to clean himself so that he throws this to the candy holes of this world, to others. But we are coming for you, Mr. Dictator. And you can run, but you cannot hide. I can guarantee you that one day all this brutality will be paid for. I thank you.